Aloha and welcome to Books, Books, Books. I'm your host, Mihaila Stoops, and today we're talking about a cultural phenomenon, Korean TV series. My guest is Dr. Carl Ackerman. He is the author of A K-Drama Voyage, The Quite Pleasurable Cultural Journey of an American Watching Korean Drama. Carl, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, and thank you. You're, you're a wonderful person to have me on. <laughs> thank you. And I'm just going to start with the most obvious question. What sparked your interest in Korean drama? How did you get into this? Well, you know, I, I have to confess, it, it's because of, of a woman who is much prettier and brighter than myself, who happens to share my last name. And my wife and several of her friends um, in Hawaii got very interested in Korean drama. And I came home one day and I don't know what I was doing. And normally I head towards our kitchen table and I get a bite to eat and drink some coffee. And I started looking up at the television set and I said, oh, this is kind of good. So, you know, and I, I kind of longed for the, you know, 1950s, early 1960s cinema um, in the United States. Of course, there were many, you know, sociological issues in the United States at that time, but still uh, the movies were a little bit more directed towards conversation. And there are also long pauses or longer pauses. And so I, I, I think Korean drama in many cases still has those things. Although many uh, Korean dramas also today, of course, emulate American television and American movies, but Korea really has its own culture. So what year was that? Because most people found out about Korean TV series in 2021 when um, the Squid Game became so popular. And I remember prior to that, I would go to Costco and I would see these sets of Korean TV series and I would be like, uh, not interested, right? <laughs> right. So um, what year, what, when did that happen for you? You know, for me, it was about 2018. And, um, you know, the Squid Game, I think does, a, a you know, a, a lot of disservice to, um Korean drama because most Korean drama are a not that bloody and b, um, you know it it emphasizes only one aspect of uh, Korean society and it, um, and that that part of Korean society is uh, kind of unemployment or underemployment, and um, that happens to be true about South Korea. So I mean it's not it's not saying anything that you know South Koreans don't admit to themselves, but it's sort of like. You know, if if the only thing you're going to focus is on, on, you know, if you had a series in the United States uh, about, you know, Martin Luther King or, or Malcolm X, and that's all you've got to know about the United States, you know, it's like exposing your problem. And I, interestingly enough, um, after the book was published, the very nice um, and congenial South Korean council here in Hawaii and his wonderful um um, artistic sort of uh, assistant, or I, I should say she's our, his um, um, art expert, because uh, she's a trained lawyer and a brilliant woman uh, on her own, uh, took me out to lunch. And they were saying some of the same things. This is post-Squid Game, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, I, the proof of the pudding of when I found out about the, um, about the Korean drama is that, you know, I could not have included um, the, a Squid Game in this book. Um, because it came out just as my book was going to be published. So there we go. So you become interested in this and you decide to write a book about your experience, you know, watching these um, TV series. And, you know, people have heard of telenovelas probably more than they have heard of Korean TV series. So why, why do you decide to write a book about it? Well, you know, if you if you um, uh, re watch Korean dramas carefully, what I'm interested in, because you know I'm trained as a historian, so um, what what I like to do, and a Russian historian, so I had to learn many things about Russian culture from observing, from watching film, et cetera, et cetera. And so this book does the same thing, but it uses as its instead of having you know a dissertation which is based on a lot of primary documents. The primary documents here are the are the Korean dramas. So um, if you go through my book, there are different Korean dramas, and the way it's the way it's organized. Let me just let me read out some of the um, uh, some of the, the uh, things from the index. Um, 
you know, the category. I, I, uh, what, yeah, the categories there. Yeah, thank you very much. That's the word I was looking for. Aren't you eloquent? So there we go. So, um, you know, corporate life and relationships, patriotism, the love of reading and literature, which is, you know, something that, um, you know, uh, I think it's called now on a, on a, on a fine winter, on a fine spring day. There's one out right now on, 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 on Netflix. Uh, it was not included in my book, but um, the, the Koreans really love literature and that, you know, it's a highly educated population. And you even have, you know, when they show kind of gangsters in Korea, they're reading too. So it's a little surprising. Uh, so, you know, everyone is reading um, health and healthcare. And what's interesting about healthcare is, you know, you would think, um, and I do think that they have some sort of, you know, socialized medicine, but then if you're wealthy, you, you can really get very nice private rooms at the hospitals. So, the, you know, if I were to describe Korea in one or two sentences, I would say that, you know, if you're a, if you're a wealthier person or a corporate person, you can, um, you can uh, uh, really um, uh, do well and, um, you know, you get a lot more respect and attention. I think it's true of a lot of countries, but in Korea, it's especially true. Um, startup businesses, environmental concerns, women and misogyny. You know, a lot of the Korean dramas are written by women. And, you know, there's a lot of undercurrent about women, you know, having um, sort of equal roles. And um, the current president of Korea um, has sort of downplayed that. Um, but, you know, if you go to the Korean drama, it's, um, it's really uh, uh, emphasized in, in many aspects of it. You know, um, I loved how you, for me as a reader and a novice to this, it, the book was tremendously helpful because I would be like, well, what should I watch? I, I want to watch something. And it's like, well, what theme am I interested in? And you're, you're not spilling the beans on any of the shows. You give us uh, an idea on what it might be uh, about and what we should look for. Sometimes there are themes that are present and we don't even think about. We just, you know, they're part of the story. So um, it's, I, I enjoy this part of, of the book. And my, as you mentioned, you know, you are a historian, you have a doctorate in European history from UC Berkeley, you've taught history at Punahou High School and Yolani schools for almost 40 years. And longer than you've been alive, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 actually not. <laughs> I'm older than that. Well, you look but... much younger. So there we go. <laughs> But to me, the, the, these TV series had an educational component. And of course, I've never been to Korea. Um, I haven't studied much of Asian history in school. And it was an opportunity to learn a bit more about the area and the country and the history, starting from zero. But what do you think as a history professor? Is there any value there? Yeah, I, I think you hit it on the head. I think that you, if you look at, now I was looking at the dramas um, mostly, especially when I started getting interested in, um, in the dramas with my wife, is I was looking at it from a historical and also a cultural perspective. And what do I mean by that latter term, cultural? You know, um, often when, you know, people travel to other countries, they make comparisons, but they also make judgments. And um, of course, in some cases, because, something really awful is happening, you have to make a judgment. But in most cases, I think you should um, delay your judgments and try to think about what this means for the people involved and how they may have a different interpretation of what you're thinking about. And so I tried to expose things. And you, know, uh, you and I had a preliminary conversation um, and um, I'm gonna go to one of the, uh, one of the dramas right now. And, um, um, you know, crash landing on you. And uh, the, the thing about crash landing on you is, you know, it's, you know, just to give the audience a little bit of uh, um, just a bit. Uh, don't don't give it all. Just a no, bit. No, no, no. I'll just give a little bit. But, you know, the, you know, it's about a um, very successful corporate woman who comes from extraordinarily wealthy family. And these are the kind of corporate people I was talking about um, in, in discussing, you know, the kind of hospital care that they get, et cetera, et cetera, because they're really the elite society. And, and you know, she's uh, she's flying, um, you know, uh, 
um, one of these kites and um, manned kites and um, hand gliding, as it were, and uh, you know gets gets goes into North Korea and and you know she has to get out, and it's her relationship between the North Korean um, army officer and herself, um, and apparently these two actors got married a- after this 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 drama, which is truly incredible. But it's about their different lives and what are exposed about, uh, about the lives and. You know, see, you see these North Korean army infantrymen watching Korean drama too. You know, which they can get a lot of in you know, a lot of trouble with. But uh, as an aside here, and this is where we had our preliminary conversation. Um, you know, there's uh, uh, what's happening is that the um, army officer used to be a classical pianist, and you know, he um, as in that position, you're not. You know, in a Marxist in this country, you don't often get to travel unless you're part of the party elite. And um, he had a chance to, to travel, and um, and he was playing, uh, you know, um, beautiful music, uh, classical music in Switzerland, I believe it was, and right. um, and you know, along a lake. And it turns out that this South Korean woman was there at the same time. So, you know, one of the things I've noticed also about Korean drama is, is you know, the I would say the. Um, screenwriter device and well the screenwriter device and the writer device is to use flashbacks um and that's often done um in korean drama but um you know the reason i started with this particular uh drama and it's you know it's you know when you when you look at this drama um in addition um crash landing on you that's a strange name i I mean you're not going to get a you're not going to get, and it may be the translation, but the crash landing on you. But she did crash land, and she did crash land almost on the army officer. So it's apt, but it's a uh, it's a different type of a of a um, of a uh, Korean drama. And you asked earlier what really got me in. This was the first w- one on Netflix that I watched with um, my wife. But we'd watched other ones that were not on Netflix or on this wonderful TV station that we have here locally in Hawaii. Um, but and and okay, this was really, really a good Korean drama to start with. And when people ask me where should they start, that's what I say: crash landing on. Well, I love the story, and uh, for me, coming from Romania, which used to be a communist country, in the beginning, the North Korean scenes seemed to be a little padded. Like you know, I know it's probably worse than what they were showing. But then as, you know, episode, episodes went by, it became more and more realistic. Like, okay, you know, you're not going to be able to travel abroad. You're not going to be able to say what you want to say. You're going to have to, you know, keep your place in line and never, you know, be different than anybody else. You're not going to do what you want to do. So it was such a showcase of how communism works and doesn't work. Um, it it to me that had a lot of value and uh, and of course the story is fantastic and as you said the uh, the title when I tell people about it they're like what they don't understand what it is I'm like don't worry just watch it <laughs> and you'll get it all and last but not least and that's how I came into it somebody at my church was playing the music from Crash Landing on You as a prelude to our service. And I was like so impressed with the music. And I said, what music is this? And then I figured if the music is this good, probably the series is good as well. So let's talk about the music part of Korean drama. You know, um, many Korean dramas will have um, uh um, classical music intertwined, and um, I'm trying to think of one I was recently recently watching um, about, or it's something about the spring or the day the weather is at the. It's something, it's something like uh, a day when the weather is fine, and uh, and it's a lovely uh, drama, but the opening scenes show you a classical cello player who's a, who turns out to be the star of the show and you get to hear her music and you know this is not uncommon for many of the 
um, um, Korean dramas. And of course, since uh, a side aspect of this is because J-pop has become so important, uh, or K-pop, not J-pop, K-pop has become so important. There are some K-dramas, which I include in, in the text, um, and I'm gonna look one up right now, um, which is, which is you know, specifically about what it is or what it means to be um, in the, uh, in the um, uh, uh, music business in Korea. Following your advice, I started watching Cinderella and the Four Nights, which has a lot of K-pop. And, um, you know, a lot of times, at least for me, K-pop was all about boy bands. But actually, this is, uh, although one of the characters is part of a boy band, uh, the soundtrack has a lot of K-pop that are female artists. So I, I, I enjoy that quite a bit as well. Um, and, you know, of course, you have the historical dramas where you, the, the soundtrack is more, I would say, traditional or the music is more traditional and one gets to learn about that. But you're really getting a, a voyage through, um, I guess, the music or the score of all these TV series as well. Yes, and you know, with with um, Cinderella and the Four Nights, since you mentioned it, I'll go there first. Um, you know, um, I I I list one of the songs um, that's uh, being listed by the um, uh, by this particular drama, and um, you know, there's one song that's very concerned about love, and you know, some of the lyrics are, "I only need you, I only need you, I don't need the club." Uh, women or alcohol, um, they're all for you. Your eyes, your nose, your lips are all mine too. And then what I did is I went to the early 1960s in this chapter and I found an old Beatles song, you know, Love Me Do, um, which is 1963 by the Beatles. And I compared it. And, you know, this Beatles song has a stanza that says, love, love me do, you know, I love you. I'll always be true. So please love me do. Whoa, love me do. And, you know, you're not going to find the kind of messages you find in Robert Zimmerman, that is Bob Dylan. And you're not going to find, you know, uh, the country uh, kind of uh, um, truthisms of Woody Guthrie. But you are going to find a lot of uh, love stories and love music um, uh, in these um, uh, in, in the popular culture. And, um, you know, there was also another K-drama which focused on this um young man uh who was just getting out of prison and um what 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 he did when he came out of prison he was he always listened to this one radio station so music is always a big part and i'm glad you mentioned this of uh k-drama always 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 and and so is love and you've already mentioned that and i want to uh, point out to our viewers that while watching Crash Landing on You, I think my husband, or maybe it was another drama, my husband and I watching together, and we counted that it took about 16 episodes for the lovers to kiss. So one interesting part about it is that love is presented more like an emotion, a relationship, and there's not a, a lot of the sexual component to it. And, and, you know, this, depending on the K-drama you watch, uh, there could be great variants, but when, when most of the K-dramas that are in uh, the ones that I've selected are exactly that, um, you know, you're dying for the, uh, in fact, there's a new one that's not in the book called, uh, would you like a cup of coffee? And you're dying for these people to get together and they don't get together. You know, most of the K-dramas are 16 episodes and they don't get together until like episode 12, you know, and you're kind of going, kiss her for god's sakes you know because the but it's you know it's a it's a more it's a more gentle society and that's what i'm talking about in terms of the 50s and the 60s um that you know american society was more like that i mean you would you wouldn't you know you take someone out and you you know you maybe shake her hand as you left uh you know your your uh, girlfriend at the, on the front door and you know her parents would know what type of boy you were or what type of girl the the uh, the woman was that you were going out with, and you know it was a much more um, much more reserved uh, thing than when we grew up with. And I, I you know I always remember um, my mother saying to all of us when we 
had various um, boyfriends or girlfriends in college, that is my sisters and, and my brothers and I, um, you know, I don't want to meet them unless you're going to marry them. And what she was saying about with that short statement was sort of like the Korean drama in the sense that, you know, there has to be a serious attitude about this. You know, um, you know, you're not, you're, you know, you're, you, you're, if you're going to present them to your mother or father, you know, and she's, you know, my mother comes from the tradition of New York and old school and, you know, her ancestors came from both Austria and Russia and my father's from Germany. And so it was just, you know, sort of old school framework, you know. Uh, they were third or fourth generation, but they still had that kind of framework of um, the 1950s and being more reserved, despite all the problems that the United States had sociologically, you know, with racism and other things and, you know, uh, misogyny and stuff like that. But it, there are parts of that period that I, I kind of admire. And, you know, it's kind of interesting that the other thing to admire is sort of like the uh, um, the uh, the automobiles. And of course, you know, in every in every uh, K drama, you know, you could you could support you could you, you you could see a Kia, and you know, think about how new Kia is, because you know there were no Kias when I was growing up, um, you know, and there probably no, were no Kias when I was um, you know in my forties, uh, but now there are Kias, and it's it's a great car. car. It's like a you know coming up to the level of uh, you know the most popular car in America, the Toyota, um, but that's um, uh, I digress, so uh, I'll be quiet for a bit. And besides the cars, it's also the fashion. I mean, if somebody likes fashion, that's a great source of information and inspiration at the same time, uh, particularly for the more current type of um, TV series. So, uh, I, you know, I urge you to, to watch. There's a new one I'm watching called Agency. And I, I should point out to the viewers that, um, that what I'm talking about um, uh, K drama. I'm only talking about K drama on Netflix, um, and I, I did that purposely in the book because you already have one rendition of Observation, and I trust Netflix to put on you know pretty good stuff. Although there's some pretty you know um, there's some other things that really remind you of more of um, American television, but um, uh, and American television can be quite good too. Um, but one of the things uh, in this in this uh, new K drama, which is about um, a advertising agency, so it's called agency, is that the, the star of the show and uh, one of the uh, corporate heads, these women dress impeccably. And um, what you have to see for both men and women um, in the Korean dramas is the, the color of their skin. It's almost perfect white. I mean, you know, and it's flawless. That's not, they don't have like red spots or anything. You know, it's like your skin. And it's like you know, it's it's absolutely flawless, and it's um, it's it's uh, it's it's quite remarkable. And when we had the opportunity, I took uh, my two daughters and my wife to um, South Korea, and uh, we went. We were staying in this sort of very uh, area in Seoul that was very close to an outdoor mall. We went to that outdoor mall, and there were there were a series of cosmetic shops, and the the Korean women really uh, mask up. And I'm not talking about like face masks. I'm talking about, you know, cosmetic masks. And they really take care of their skin. But it's not just the women. It's the men, too. And so they have really quite, at least in the Korean dramas, their skin is flawless. And it's uh, quite remarkable. And, and you probably saw this in Crash Landing um, on you. Despite the guy he, being in the Army, he had pretty good skin to boot. <laughs> yeah, both female and male actors are just beautiful. There's it's just yeah their skin is beautiful so since we're approaching the end of the show i'm going to ask you um if you were to recommend a series and you've mentioned um agency um is there any other series that you'd recommend that is newer and that maybe if you're considering updating the book you would include do you know um i was reading and you're gonna laugh at this um i was reading the new york review of books and there was a um, remembrance um, about a writer for the New Yorker or the New York Review of Books. And one of the, one of the things he said at the very end of his uh, um, life to his friends, he said, look, if you're going to get a Russian novel, you should get it translated by Constance Scarnett. And of course, he was right on there. But at the very end, the very end of this article, 
the other thing he said is to go and watch the series, um, the, the Extraordinary Attorney Wu, which is about an attorney who is dyslexic, or maybe she's, maybe, no, it's not dyslexic. It's, it's she, she has a, it's stronger than that, um, that she has, um, um, and, um, you know, by, by birth. And so uh, she operates in a very um, kind of interesting way as a lawyer, um, but she's very successful in what she does. Um, and uh, this has become, you know, I, I even got a call um, from my older brother who is who doesn't watch that much Korean drama. And he said, have you seen this one? And of course, uh, Lynn and I had watched it. Um, uh, and uh, that's, that's the one I would recommend. And uh, um, the other thing for, um, I don't know how you feel about coffee, but um, would you like a cup of coffee is something that I've, I wrote a, I've written a couple of um, reviews of uh, K-drama for um, a journal called the Korean Journal, uh, which is published in the Midwest in the United States, and I think in Minneapolis. And I wrote a review of Would You Like a Cup of Coffee? And that's an interesting one about, about uh, a cafe. I think cafe leads into um, a variety of um, relationships between the owner of the cafe and a variety of other people. So it's, it's sort of set up that way, you know. Well, so to summarize, Crash Landing on You, Agency, Extraordinary, Attorney Wu, and Would You Like a Cup of Coffee? So, dear viewers, you have four Korean dramas to look into, and I hope you reach out and you tell us how you enjoyed them. And Carl, thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for inspiring me to start my voyage into K-drama. And as you were mentioning, you know, it's best done um, um, watching with your uh, husband, although I must say in conclusion that my wife gets kind of annoyed because I do look for the historical aspects to the drama. And I will say to her, like about agency, I'll say, oh, that's kind of strange. You know, they really come to a consensus before they come to a final comment. But my suggestion is watch with your uh, wonderful husband and, um, and uh, you can bug him the way I bug my wife. <laughs> I give you permission. And that's how you keep your marriage going. Oh, so. of course. <laughs> well, thank you again and ahui ho. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.